our kind of starter question for the discussion about just kind of the the mechanics, the experience of of putting a book together is like, why did you want to write a book in the first place? And specifically, why why this book? Yeah. So I wanted to write a book because I'm out of my mind. And I figured, well, how hard could it be? Yeah. Like it is um, a, a manifestation of some deep neuroses, psychoses, like, you know, I've got some issues. No, but um, I mean, seriously, I, you know, like I, I love books, that there are some stories that can only be told over a book length piece of work. Mm -hmm. And in that medium in particular, because people can sit with it, they can take it with them, they can follow a topic, you know, along a journey, you know, and it not just be, you know, like the articles that I had written before. And I love writing articles as well. But it seemed to me that that a story as big and as important of the crack epidemic, which there hadn't been authoritative history written of it before, that it was worthy of that level of treatment. And I read Isabel Wilkerson's The Warmth of Other Sons, which is about... I was just thinking about her. I mean, and and it's so, you know, amazing book for those that haven't read it. It is a story of the great migration that's told through these three characters that leave the South for big cities. And the book follows them along that journey. And what it does is, right, it puts language to a phenomenon that most Black Americans kind of know intuitively, which is that, you know, if you're from the North, you got family in the South. If you're from the South, you got family that moved North. You know, everybody's grandmother is like a little bit Southern, right? Like we're all connected, you know, by those roots. Mm -hmm. But, you know, not everybody thought of themselves, especially in Northern cities, right, as like migrants from the South. And that's what her book did was it like added context to this thing that we think we understand. So after I read that, I thought, well, that's why you write a book. Mm -hmm. And, you know, is there a topic that feels to me worthy of that and crack was it? I want to kind of get perspective from each of us on this about the respective mm. projects that we're working on. Travel, why did you think about writing a book in the way that you did? Because I know this was a years long process for you before it became We See Each Other. Yeah, I mean, I never thought I would write a book. That wasn't, you know, all right, what? Write a book, girl, sit your ass down. You know what I mean? It just always seemed as as something unachievable or like, you know, like the task was was just too big. And then, you know, you become a daily news, like a daily reporter, right? And you're, you're you know, you're shitting out pieces, you know, because you have to, because you, you got to keep a blog going at the Los Angeles Times while also filling the newspaper mm. every single day, right? And working on projects and whatnot. And so you'd be like, oh, well, you know, I'm now at a point in which, like, I know I can write. I know I can write well. I can write well under pressure. But also the stories that I love the most are actually the ones that I get more time to wrestle with with the content, with the material, to think about how I'm going to put words together. And then, then I left the LA Times, right? And I went to the magazine space where there was, you know, a little bit more space to, to work and wrestle with things. Um, and I think similar to what Donovan was saying at a point, there was just so much that I wanted to talk about, particularly around this visibility of trans folks conversation that even magazines could not hold face-wise, right? Like my last, my last uh, piece for out magazine before they laid me off two days before christmas 2019 is this you know five thousand six thousand word piece about trans visibility right and i in in which i interview laverne and chella man and chart a history between both of their journeys they're not giving out five thousand words for the girls to write i was surprised that philip picardi and raquel willis said girl write Right. And so after that, it was just like this history is important. There was so much that I could not and did not include in in that piece. It feels worthy of, you know, this broader text. And it would also give me the opportunity, I thought, in my head to really sit with, you know, the archive, sit with these images in a meaningful way. And then, you know, the idea shifted and twisted and all of that other stuff from there. But that's kind of like how the journey to to the book and, and being an author in the first place kind of manifested for me. 
But we know you, Jared. You've been you've been thinking about writing a book for decades. Well, no, I haven't been. And like, so it's interesting because this isn't the first book that I've written, but this is the first book that I've published. Right? I wrote another book telling someone else's story. <laughs> I wrote a book about this man named Reggie Webb. It was called Pursuing Parody, and it's about his incredible influence in like making McDonald's into the diverse company that it is today. He was one of their first black executives, and like, I I got to write his story, and like, we never like ended up publishing it right we kind of like i wrote it and like that was kind of the end and we never edited it and, and and went on with it but then this book for historically black phrases was something that was not ever like something that i was thinking about and travel and i started joking about like we have to find different ways to tell this story because we're gonna have to tell it a thousand times and we're gonna be tired of hearing it but like i'm already tired of hearing it friend I, I know you're tired of hearing it, and I'm like, I'm tired of telling the story at this point, right? But, like, making Facebook posts, using the hashtag historically black phrases, and, like, that kind of, someone asked me if I was making a book or something, and I that kind of, like, sparked the idea. And, like, I kept trying to figure out what to do with it, right? And, like, I, I'm very much an ideas person, and, like, I wanted to see what I could do with the idea. And so this has been seven years in the making to our book coming out in September because... I tried to sell it as a book. I tried to sell it as a television show. I tried to sell it as a video series for like Blavity or BuzzFeed or like I tried to just wanted to do something with the conversation about it. And so like the book was the thing that ended up moving in a certain kind of way after the television show I kind of developed in a certain kind of way. You know, you just needed some extra razzle dazzle on top. You know, you just you just need an extra little je ne sais quoi, you know. <laughs> and and I and I found that. And I found that with an agent named Patrice, and she really no. Wow. 